Hi, and welcome to our backyard at the Natural History Museum of Utah. Here, we invite our youngest visitors to play and explore. What will you discover while crawling in the tunnel or floating in the stream? What will you find chomping in the trees or living in the walls? Welcome to our backyard. Our backyard is home to over a dozen animals, most of them native to Utah. Here you'll find amphibians, reptiles, insects, and arachnids. Sometimes you have to wait and look closely to spot them. Let's learn more about some of these animals and how we care for them here in the Critter Care Room. Welcome to the Critter Care Room. All animals need certain things to survive. They need food, water, oxygen, and shelter, a safe place. In the wild, animals find these things in their habitats. Here at the museum, everything the animals need is right here in the critter care room. Most of our animals here eat crickets or vegetables or mice. So we have a place for those, full of all of those yummy goodies. We also make sure that the animals get fed the right number of times. So when our volunteers come in to feed the animals, they keep track on our critter care sheet. Did each animal get enough food, water? Was their enclosure cleaned? Was their temperature correct? Everything the animals need to stay safe, happy, and healthy. We also have animals that live here. When animals are on display all the time, that can get exhausting. So we have other animals that can substitute for them and the animals on display can take a break. We also have ways to get into the animal enclosures from here in the critter care room. Hey, here's our first animal. You ever seen an animal like this before? It's got slimy skin with spots, four legs and a tail. This is a tiger salamander. We have tiger salamanders here in Utah, but they can be hard to find. They spend a lot of time burrowed underground or hiding under rocks. Now, they are amphibians like frogs, toads, newts, which means that they go through a life cycle. They lay eggs in the water, that hatch into tadpole-like babies that live in the water. As they grow, they grow legs and lungs and then come out of the water as adults. They are predators. They hunt insects, slugs, snails. But here at the museum, they eat crickets and mealworms. Let's see, here's a fun fact about salamanders. They don't drink water. Instead, they soak up water through their skin. They can just sit in a puddle or in the mud and drink up the water right through their skin. So next time you are out by a pond or a freshwater stream, take a look under some rocks. You might be able to find a tiger salamander in your own backyard. All right, let's get this guy back home. Bye, little guy. Next, we have our brown tarantula. You can find these throughout Utah and many parts of the Western US. You'll notice up close that you have two front structures. They look a lot like legs, but really they're what we call pedipalps. They're used to hold their prey and also used to mate in the males. This one is a female and we like to have females because they live longer. One thing you also notice are these fine hairs. They use these hairs and we call them urticating hairs and they'll shoot them out at any predators that would come by and try to attack it. And it tells them, ooh, I don't wanna mess with this animal. This is a scary animal. I don't like this feeling. Uh, you'll notice the eight legs, you'll find that in spiders, and that's one of their adaptations too. You'll find tarantulas in burrows typically. Other spiders might be in webs, but you'll find them underground. And you can even see one of their food items right in here is a cricket. And here at the museum, we feed them crickets. And compared to the different things they might eat in the wild, which would be insects or mice even. But for the most part, brown tarantulas are very docile animals. Next, we have our horned lizard, and you can find these throughout Utah and much of the Americas. You're gonna find them in hot, sandy, dry environments. Let's take a look at their adaptations. So if you look closely at it, you'll notice the colors even. So their colors match a lot of the desert. So they have um, brown colors, kind of some reddish colors. It really depends where you are. They're gonna fit their environment because that helps them camouflage and blend in better. Next up, you're gonna notice these spikes on its back and also on the back of its head. So these spikes are very useful. They're good for threatening any predators. If you come up to this, maybe you're a coyote and you think, well, I'm gonna eat that. It's gonna puff up and flatten out a bit 
and it's gonna present those spikes and you're gonna probably back off because it can be a very intimidating lizard when you're just some other predator. So we're gonna go ahead and put this little guy back. There we go. Also in captivity, we like to make sure they stay hydrated. So they're not the best at drinking water in captivity. So what we do is we have a spray bottle and we just give them a nice little mist. All right, now it's time for one of my personal favorite reptiles. Do you have a guess of what this might be? This is a gopher snake. Now, if you guessed a rattlesnake, well, you're not far off. Gopher snakes are adapted to mimic rattlesnakes. If you can see the end of his tail, it doesn't have a rattle on it. But when gopher snakes are threatened by a predator, they can shake the end of their tail and hiss to mimic a venomous rattlesnake. Now, gopher snakes aren't venomous. They are constrictors. They kill their prey by squeezing it super tight, like a boa or an anaconda. They can be found here in Utah, especially right here around the museum. And they hunt and eat mice, rats, other rodents. Now, if you run into a gopher snake, you should give it space because it can bite. Anything with teeth can bite you, but they're not venomous, so it wouldn't be dangerous like a rattlesnake. Uh, here at the museum, we actually have three gopher snakes. We have a dad and two younger snakes. This one is named Spot. He's lived here at the museum for about eight years. Here's an odd thing. Here at the museum, we feed our snakes about one mouse every two weeks. That might not seem like very much, but that's what they need to stay healthy. Snakes are adapted to only eat when they can catch their prey. So if we fed them more mice more often, they wouldn't be very healthy. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and return Spot back to his enclosure. Bye-bye. Thanks for exploring our backyard and seeing some of our animals here at the Natural History Museum of Utah. Now it's your turn. Go explore your backyard. What animals and plants can you find there? I think you'll be surprised what you can discover. Till next time, thanks for exploring our backyard with us. Bye-bye.